why do we need to rethink the biological section of conventional wastewater treatment plants? The biological section of traditional wastewater treatment plants is aiming at removing soluble and non-settlable solids and is typically based on metabolism of heterotrophic bacteria for carbon and phosphorus removal and autotrophic bacteria for nitrogen removal. While simplicity is the main advantage of this biological process, the main drawback is associated with the remarkable oxygen request and corresponding electric energy consumption and the production of waste sludge, whose treatment and disposal makes up another large fraction of the overall wastewater treatment cost. Alternative ways to achieve similar treatment results while relieving the drawbacks of the activated sludge process is to include new microbes in the system, microalgae. What are microalgae and why are they interesting? Microalgae are mainly aquatic photosynthetic organisms converting soluble nutrients, CO2 and solar radiation into new biomass while releasing oxygen. They are simpler and grow faster than conventional crops and their growth rate is similar to that of other microorganisms already applied in conventional biological systems. Having microalgae uh, in the biological system allows the direct conversion of the solar radiation to dissolved oxygen, thus implementing the so-called photooxygenation. The oxygen released by photosynthesis sustains the oxygen demand by nitrifiers and by heterotrophic bacteria, thus leading to the development of a complex ecosystem in which many microbes coexist and interact according to complex synergistic pathways. From a technological point of view, algae bacteria systems are designed in order to effectively capture solar energy and provide enough turbulence to optimize algae exposure to the sunlight and avoiding biomass settling. The typical technical solution consists in a shallow raceway pond with a water depth of 30 to 50 cm, equipped with a paddle wheel for mixing, also named high rate algal ponds. They can be as simple as uh, dark channels with plastic liners. Being based on the capture of solar energy, these systems have a high surface demand since microalgae productivity and the consequent remediation capacity is proportional to the surface of the pond and the incident solar radiation, making it season and climate dependent. Thus, for a complete assessment of the applicability of the process, the constraints posed by the weather and climatic conditions and the significant footprint must be considered. Indeed, algal biomass productivity and thus the oxygenation capacity and the treatment capacity per unit of area can vary between 30 and 40 tons per hectare per year in northern Italy, with a seasonal trend such as the one reported in the graph, 200 tons per hectare per year in the south of Spain. Consequently, the required area varies within uh, rather wide intervals, approximately between 2 and 10 square meter per inhabitant, which is at least one order of magnitude higher than the footprint of traditional systems. As an alternative, microalgae cultivation can be integrated in the sludge line by being fed on the liquid fraction of a digestate, thus reducing the nutrient loads sent back to the water line. In this case, the remediation capacity of the wastewater treatment plant still relies on the conventional processes and the microalgae side treatment is aimed at reducing the energy consumption in the water line. But what is the technological maturity of microalgae-based processes for wastewater treatment? As for the technological maturity of these processes, implementation in Mediterranean climates has reached large-scale demo plants. In the city of Chiclana, in southern Spain, a two-hectare algae pond operated by Aqualia is replacing both the primary and secondary treatments. The secondary effluent complies with the discharge limits, while the biomass produced is separated with a dissolved air flotation system and sent to the production of biomethane. 
Under these favorable climatic conditions, a land request of 2 square meter per inhabitant is needed. Removal efficiency of 80% of nitrogen and 90% of phosphorus at an energy consumption of 0.2 kilowatt hour per uh, cubic meter are reported by Aqualia. And now we can ask ourselves, is the waste algal biomass a waste or a product? Well, dealing with this green waste sludge can significantly change the perspective with which we look at the conventional sludge line. While anaerobic digestion for biomethane production is the straightforward alternative but returning less than 1 euro per kilo of dry weight, the green sludge is a potential source of valuable biomolecules such as pigments, proteins, sugars or lipids, which are expected to find new markets in the agricultural sector in the near future with significantly higher expected revenues. So let's sum up the advantages and disadvantages of the algae-based treatment. Among the advantages, we can certainly list the low energy cost, the system simplicity, the production of algal biomass with potential commercial value. While main disadvantages are related to constraints posed to the site characteristics such as topography, geology, land availability and climate. As a final remark, it must be said that some challenges have still to be faced to favor the spreading of this technology, including technical aspects like the optimization of design and operational procedures as a function of the wastewater strength and of the local climate, and the establishment of market opportunities for the algal biomass, which in turn depends on a yet undefined legislation framework. Indeed, a clear regulatory framework for recovered materials would contribute to a substantial leap forward in the uptake of green algae-based processes.